just got a report in the mail from the uh, probably another program that Donald Trump will shut down. Um, uh, this is from uh, S-I-G-A-R, which is the, um, I used to know it, it's the special s uh, something on Afghanistan uh, reconstruction. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an agent, it's, a, it's out of the military, it's, uh, and uh, in fact it's mail.mil is, uh, is the URL. And today, SIGAR released its latest special projects work, the, co the human cost of reconstruction in Afghanistan. Now, this is, this is coming from our military. It's coming out of the Department of Defense. I'm on their media list. And the report is believed to be the first official counting by an independent inspector general. Yeah, SIG is Special in Inspector General. That's what it is for Afghanistan reconstruction. That's what SIGAR is by an independent inspector general of the human costs of reconstruction and stabilization in Afghanistan. We're not talking the, the war where we took down Mullah Omar. That lasted just a few weeks. Uh, you know, Trump, or <laughs> Trump, Bush, uh, was, that, that was not a big deal. And let's not forget, by the way, that after 9-11, Mullah Omar, who was the leader of the Taliban in Afghanistan, which was the government of Afghanistan. Afghanistan was at that point in time the second poorest country in the world behind Burkina Faso. Their annual gross domestic product, the entire, the total sum of all economic activity in the country of Afghanistan was $2 billion a year. $2 billion a year. So Mullah Omar came out after 9-11 and you can find this in the Washington Post, it's where I read it. And he said, and this is back, you know, back in the day, 2001, November 2001, or maybe late September of 2001. And he said, if you guys, he's speaking to George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, he said, if you guys have any evidence at all that, that uh, Osama bin Laden was actually behind this, he's here in Afghanistan, uh, along with about 5,000 of his merry band, I will arrest him for you, and we will turn him over to a third country. We, we don't want to send him to the United States. We have a bit of a problem with you guys, but we'll send him to a third country where you can have a, a trial like the Nuremberg trials. You can hold him on trial, you know, in pretty much any third country you want. We'll work with Europe to make this happen, and we're prepared to do it. We're prepared to arrest him right now. And George W. Bush and Dick Cheney said, oh, no, 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 no. We want a war. Wars are what gets presidents reelected in 2004. I mean, we're looking forward here. Joyce, I don't know if you can put my, uh, my 360 up here, but thank you. Um, you'll recall Cindy Sheehan, whose son Casey was killed in Iraq after George W. Bush lied us into the war in Iraq, testified before Congress, before John Conyers' commission, and she said, this. As a matter of fact, in interviews in 1999 with respected journalists and longtime Bush family friend Mickey Herskowitz, then Governor George Bush stated, one of the keys to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as commander in chief. My father had all this political capital built up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait and he wasted it. If I have a chance to invade, if I had that much capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I want to get passed, and I'm going to have a successful presidency, end quote. So George W. Bush lied to us. This was the year before he ran for president. He was telling the guy who was writing A Charge to Keep, his autobiography, who was his ghostwriter, he was saying, if I become president, I'm going to invade Iraq, because when my daddy did it, he was only there for three days, and he did not get enough political capital to get himself reelected. He lost to Bill Clinton in 92. I'm going to get myself reelected. And the first opportunity they had was not Iraq. It was Afghanistan because 9-11 and that's where bin Laden was. So we invaded Afghanistan and, and we're still there, you know, 20 years later. Or what is it? 19 years later, I guess. So the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, S-I-G-A-R, they sent out this press release this morning. 
This report is believed to be the first official counting by an independent inspector general of the human cost of reconstruction and stabilization in Afghanistan, the number of people killed, wounded, or kidnapped while doing these activities. And, by, and when they say people, by and large, they're talking about Americans. Key points. Using multiple casualty-related sources, SIGAR conservatively identifies 5,135 casualties in Afghanistan associated with reconstruction or stabilization missions from 2000 through December 30, 31st, 2018. Again, these are not casualties associated with war. These are not, I mean, the, the casualties associated with war are much greater than that. These are not casualties associated with war. These are casualties associated with trying to rebuild a country that we broke so that George W. Bush and Dick Cheney could get a second term in office. And if you think that Donald Trump is not thinking about this right now, who is he going to go to war with just in time for the election? Think again. But anyhow, back to Cigar. The total, the total reconstruction-related casualties include 2,214 killed, 2,921 wounded. The report also identifies 1,182 individuals who were kidnapped or went missing. During this period, at least 284 Americans were killed in Afghanistan while performing reconstruction or stabilization missions. This includes 216 U.S. service members and 68 U.S. civilians, government employees, contractors, and those with unknown status. An additional 240, I said earlier it was Americans, I, apparently it's Americans and Afghans as well. An additional 245 U.S. service members and 76 U.S. civilians were wounded. A hundred other coalition service members were killed and 105 wounded. Another 124 third country nationals were killed, 87 wounded, 59 kidnapped. 1,578 Afghans were killed, 2,246 wounded, 1,004 kidnapped. These included 1,447 Afghan civilians killed, 2,008 wounded, 1,003 kidnapped. Of the Afghans killed, 65 were bystanders. Now just think if your brother or sister or son or daughter or mother or father was one of these people who went to Afghanistan to try to help rebuild the country, who was kidnapped or killed or wounded and permanently scarred. D uh, data collected by SIGAR shows that the majority of casualties occurred during the height of the reconstruction efforts between 2008 and 2011. There were 818 casualties re related to security activities. This is around reconstruction. 346 killed, 472 wounded. This was the most dangerous activity for Americans. Of the 346 people killed while performing security-related activities, 195 were Americans, including 154 U.S. service members and 41 U.S. civilians. There were 257 casualties related to humanitarian activities. This category included casualties and kidnappings that occurred while providing health and education services to local communities, providing food aid, supporting displaced populations, and other activities aimed at alleviating the suffering of the Afghan people. SIGAR concludes that unless the U.S. government considers the human costs, the true costs of reconstruction and stabilization efforts in Afghanistan are not accurately captured. Let that sink in. And, and, and listen one more time to Cindy Sheehan. As a matter of fact, in interviews in 1999 with respected journalists and longtime Bush family friend Mickey Herskowitz, then Governor George Bush stated, one of the keys to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as commander in chief. My father had all this political capital built up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait and he wasted it. If I have a chance to invade, if I had that much capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I want to get passed, and I'm going to have a successful presidency, end quote. And she goes on to say, it looks like my son Casey's fate was sealed before he even joined the military. He joined the Army, I believe it was, as a result of 9-11. It's time for us to get the hell out of Afghanistan and Iraq. It's among other things <laughs> and other places, excuse me.